What's up guys, Eric with Veris Engineering and we are here today to install the FA24 motor mounts and this is going to fit your GR86, BRZ and VBWRX. This is the base plate. These are CNC machined in-house. Everything is made here at Veris Engineering. We offer three different durometers, 70A, 80A and 90A durometer bushings. You can choose which harshness, stiffness you would like for your car. Now the main benefit what you're gonna see from this product is a reduced engine movement and thus an improved feel between you, the driver, and the motor and transmission. When driving our shop VBWRX, the first thing I noticed when driving it in OEM format was how vague and crappy that shifter felt. Once we installed the motor mounts, that substantially got better. It, it just, you feel more connected with the car. You actually can feel the car going in and out of gear. It's actually really nice. This did come with some noise, vibration, and har harshness, so NVH, which you might read online. And some people may not want that. So if you do not like noise, vibration, harshness, these motor mounts may not be for you. If you want to feel more of what the engine and the transmission are doing, these motor mounts probably are for you. I have not driven our GR86 because it's been down for a lot of development yet, but I'm assuming the similar benefits will happen to that chassis. Let's get to let's get with Tom and let's get to the install. All right, tools we need to complete the motor mount install. You're going to want a light because we'll be underneath the car. 18 millimeter uh, wrench, a, a ratchet of some sort. I've got a pretty long 3 8 ratchet here, and then going down the line for uh, sockets, we'll need. <clears throat> a 17 mil, 16 mil, 14 millimeter, 13 millimeter, 12 millimeter, 10 millimeter socket. I recommend having an extension on hand as well. And you can either use a flat tip screwdriver or a clip removal tool, panel popper tool or something to remove the plastic rivets on the under panel. All right, so as part of the kit components, we have three different bushing uh, durometers for you black, gray, and blue, going soft, medium, hard. Uh, which one you want to choose is up to you. We have the bushing retainer bracket, the bushing retainer, and the engine motor mount uh, base plate, if you will. And here we have basically one of the sides partially assembled, so you guys have an idea of what this actually looks like uh, towards the end. And then of course we're gonna receive a hardware kit. All right guys, so I've got the uh, motor mounts here in front of me. What we want to do to get these things assembled is take your uh, bushing retainer bracket, the powder coated uh, piece, take your flathead, M8 flathead uh, cap screws, put them through the top like so, and use your M8 serrated flange nuts for the back, torque these to 13 foot pounds. Now keep in mind that the logo is going to be facing the front of the car. And when you have it like this, this, uh, if you want to call it the thicker portion uh, here, should be inboard pointing towards the engine. Next, we want to get our bushing retainer, this guy here. And we want to insert our bushings and bushing sleeve into that. And to do that, we want to get some uh, automotive grade um, grease, high temp grease. Um, we use this, uh, it's called Sil Glide. Just apply a little bit of grease to the inside boards, spread it around. Take your bushing halves. If you want to, um, you can lubricate uh, this surface here, but basically we've effectively already done that by lubricating the inside of the retainer. Press them in. Grab the bushing sleeve. You're seeing it now, but what I found is uh, on this step, lubing both the inside of the bushing and the sleeve is probably best practice. Um, not gonna lie, at the end of this, you're gonna have a lot of grease pushing out the other side, but getting this thing stuck halfway is kind of annoying. You should be able to press that through by hand. You'll have this uh, little bit of uh, grease that squirts out. Lube the face of the bushings. 
Then you need to set this bushing retainer into the uh, motor mount assembly here. Uh, this locating dowel should be facing the outside of the engine bay um, or you know the frame rail, basically the car, um, whatever you want to call it, but away from the engine. And if we're keeping in mind uh, this portion here that we pointed out that should be facing towards the engine, then they should be the opposite of each other. Put your M12 nuts on. Those are the nylock nuts provided in the hardware kit. Tighten them down and we're good to go. We're ready to install this onto the car. All right, so here is what we're going to be working with uh, in terms of ow, the area that we're going to be dealing with here. Uh, we need to remove the metal under tray and unbolt the front section of this uh, fabric covered under panel. So to do that, I already have most of the bolts loose. Um, you're gonna need a 10 millimeter, a 12 millimeter socket and a flathead screwdriver or panel popper. So along the sides here, we've got three, normally you'll have three clips. I only have one in there right now. And on this side, you will have two here and here. Taking that off. 10 millimeters across the back and 12 millimeters. I only have the one 10 millimeter here. Yeah. And then of course, like I said before, we have 12 millimeters. Drop your gun on the ground. And that's that. Panels off. Set it aside. Um, take the remaining 10 millimeters out of the front of the, I don't know if you want to call it the trans under panel or something. You want to be able to move it down just like this. Okay, next step, we need to unbolt the motor mount. So you'll need a 17 millimeter socket and extension. Poke it up through this hole for the passenger side and the same looking hole on the driver's side. I, as always, have these unbolted. So I'm just going to unthread these. Like so, or not. Motor mounts are unbolted. All right, so we have the motor mounts unbolted. Obviously the cover's removed. Uh, grab yourself a block of wood or uh, yeah, just grab a block of wood. It's uh, probably the easiest thing. Um, we are going to jack the engine up at the transmission just after the bell housing, rear of the sway bar, which is going to be hard to see if you could see it at all. Basically, you have the subframe, you have the steering rack, sway bar. You want the block of wood on the transmission and you want to not hit the sway bar definitely don't want to hit the steering rack for sure all right so obviously we have uh we jacked our vehicle up using or <laughs> we lifted our vehicle using the lift so we have access here but um, we're using a pole jack you can use a regular floor jack that's up to you we're going to start jacking up the engine, which you may or may not be able to see just yet. And what we're looking for is these studs to clear, studs on the engine mount, to clear the cross member. That's it. All right, so here I'm trying to show you inside of that pocket. Uh, you can see where the nut was and you can see the dowel pin and a little bit of the stud peeking through the motor is obviously not um, jacked up level so that's what you want you want to make sure that the stud is totally clear of the subframe hopefully we can get a good shot here and that's basically what it looks like okay so we already have our 
both of our O2 sensors disconnected from earlier, so that's not gonna be a problem. The next thing we're gonna, we're gonna need to do is remove the manifold slash catalytic converters. And to do that, you're going to want your extension with 14 millimeter, I use a deep socket here. And where the exhaust manifold hits the cylinder head is obviously where the flange is. I have one nut holding this up and I can't find where I put it. Here it is. So you might be asking, why did we jack the engine up? Basically, this gives you a little more clearance to have these studs that go to the overpipe uh, come out while you drop the exhaust manifold down. So again, there's three 14 millimeter nuts on each side, three here, and three here, uh, and then two 14 millimeter nuts that go to the overpipe here. So one, two, and then three here, three here. Once you have them all out, like I have now, you're gonna wanna pull down and then you're gonna need to pull forward. Uh, but again, if you have the motor jacked up uh, like we did earlier, you might not even need to do that. It might just come right out like it just did. So exhaust manifold, set it out of the way. Uh, for those of you that don't know what that flange looks like, it's hard to get a little picture here, but you're looking for a flange that is this shape on both sides, here and here, and there will be three studs, uh, which you'll take the 14 millimeter nuts off of all three. All right, so we need to unbolt the motor mounts from the upper wheel pan slash engine block. To do that, I'm gonna take that same extension with 14 millimeter socket, and unbolt the two 14 millimeter bolts that hold it to the block. This is the front bolt, and there is a rear bolt that is tucked up behind. Jeez. Oh, Back here, um, I'll have to grab the camera and show you guys, but if you could see my hand waving, it's back here um, above the steering rack. All right, so just to give you guys an idea, we're back behind uh, by the trans cover that we took off. Here's the pole jack, the steering rack, and the sway bar, and try and get in here. There is the rear bolt for the motor mount bracket. All right, so hopefully that gave you guys an idea of where the rear bolt is. I'm gonna take that out now. Um, you'll wanna just use a ratchet with a shallow socket, preferably. Um, probably be the easiest, just cause clearance isn't the best back there. And boom, there you go, motor mount is out. You're gonna wanna re repeat the process for the driver's side. Uh, or passenger side, depending on which one you did first. I'm assuming we started with this one, uh, if you're following along. And that should come out the same way, just as easy. All right, OEM motor mount, o OEM odor. OEM motor mount is out. Grab your now assembled Varus Engineering solid engine mount. And you'll notice that we use a bolt design instead of a stud. We still have the locating dowel like uh, we have on the OEM to make sure that the motor is center in the cradle. We're gonna slide this in. You'll notice it'll be a lot easier without the stud in the way. And we're gonna reuse the OEM bolts to bolt the motor mount back to the engine block. These are the 14 millimeter um, bolts with the lock nuts on them, in case you got any of the bolts mixed up. And I like to do this looking, well, if you can, at the slot, and that will tell you that you are lined up with that dowel. Of course, it should anyways, but it will also, if you didn't have it on correctly, the dowel pin should always be on the outside of the car. So on this side for the uh, passenger side and this side for the driver. And this will give you another indication that you might have the wrong side going up. Next, we are going 
to grab our tools. So we're gonna be tightening these bolts down. Nope. And following my original advice, I probably should have put a shallow socket on here. but we're able to get it done. All right, so we have the motor mount bolted to the block. Um, next step is to actually, uh, once you have both motor mounts installed, uh, which I do not, I only have one side, um, you're gonna wanna lower the engine down just enough so that the supplied M12 bolts will actually thread into the engine mount um, this way, uh, it'll help you kind of start to line up the engine mount. Um, if you have it sitting on the cradle, uh, it could be hard to start the bolt if you're off by just a little bit. This gives you a little bit of wiggle room. All right. So once you have the engine, uh, settled within the cradle and it's even side to side, Go ahead and torque those M12 bolts down, and then we will be completed installing the Varus Engineering motor mounts. You're gonna wanna reinstall, obviously, everything uh, in the reverse order, and you'll be good to go. So, thanks for joining us for this installation. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, be sure to email us at sales at engineeringcom Until next time, we'll see you later.